president of the African Development Bank. Um, I have great expectations, uh, great excitement about the African continent. And it's not just because you want to be rosy, right? Folks said in the past, Africa rising, but Africa is not rising. Well, that's, those are the kind of appellations that people use. It doesn't have any meaning as far as I'm concerned. The fact of the matter is Africa has never gone down. Africa went through challenges like every other continent went through challenges. And they came out of their challenges. So will Africa come out of its challenges? So I don't subscribe to those that would say, well, that's Africa is rising today, or Africa is not rising tomorrow. Um, you don't say that for Europe. You don't say that for Brexit. You don't say that for uh, Asia. So why is that an appellation that we should get used to? I think we should get rid of that. Because for me, it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But take a look at what has happened in terms of economic growth for Africa. Today, Africa's economic growth, GDP growth rate is 4.3%. You know, and you take a look at it from where we were coming, it's still above a lot of the global average. But that doesn't even tell you the entire story. You've got 30 countries that are growing at five, you know, three to five percent and, and even above uh, that. And so that tells you that you take a look at Kenya, you take a look at Tanzania, you look at Rwanda, you look at Senegal, you look at Cote d'Ivoire, you look at those countries that are growing, even Ethiopia is growing at 10 percent. And so I don't buy the kind of normalization of African countries. That's the first thing. Secondly, is that why should Africa not develop based on what it has? Africa has, as I said, tremendous amount of resources. What we must do is to be smart in unlocking our own resources that we have uh, 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 on the continent. And that, for me, uh, is not something that we should be doing relying on just the external parties. Africa should actually use its own sovereign wealth funds, its own pension funds, its own you know, insurance pool of funds to be able to do that. But even talking of all the others, you know, if you have today, you have today $120 trillion of global savings pool that is out there. If Africa can just leverage a little bit of that, we will close all of those gaps that you talk about in no time. Take, for example, the amount of taxes that we collect in Africa. Today, the amount of taxes we collect in Africa is roughly $500 billion a year. Okay, you're talking about $70 billion gap. Well, if you just simply devoted 10% of that, to infrastructure, you close 50% of that every year. So I think it comes down to also uh, an allocative decision, that are we making the right allocative decision in how we use our public uh, financing to support the areas of growth and development that we should have. And I also think that at the end of the day, if we use our taxes properly, if we have public expenditure efficiencies, and if we are able to leverage the global pension funds and others through the kind of vehicles that we have in Africa 50 has, I don't see why we will not be able to do that. I am a firm believer in Africa developing with pride. I don't believe Africa should develop with aid. I don't believe Africa should develop by grants. I think Africa should develop by the discipline of investments. And there's absolutely no reason why Asia can do that, Latin America can do that, Europe did that. Why can't Africa? I think it all comes down to believing in ourselves, believing in how we use our own resources, and believing at the end of the day that nobody should allow, we shouldn't allow ourselves to be, uh, to be put into labels. It's for Africa to develop and to accelerate its own development, but it must do so with pride. We talked about this de-risking, but let's put it all into a context to, to kick things off. We want to de-risk investment to make it bankable before approaching the private sector for funding. Basically, you, then her, then him, right? But given what has happened with the African Development Bank and what happened with the African Investment Forum, which we saw chart uh, the path to this and s draft some of the policies that are now being implemented by Africa 50 as well, what did you note? How dire is the situation right now? Well, I think uh, it should, we'll be talking about how exciting uh, the situation really is. Um, you know, people talk quite a lot about the amount of financing gap for infrastructure in Africa. Yes, the African Development Bank just did an analysis which showed that it's anything between $68 billion to $100 billion. But that's in terms of quantum of money that the gap is. I'm not scared of that amount of money. Uh, the fact is that the opportunities are there for those investments to actually happen uh, for three reasons. First and foremost is we need investment vehicles that will allow us to be able to tap into private sector, not just public money, uh, going to that infrastructure. And as you know, um, uh, I'm also the chairman uh, of Africa 50. We just held our, uh, our, you know, our general shareholders meeting here. 
And the Africa of 50, which Alan shares, uh, is the CEO, is what the African Development Bank, we helped to set it up, uh, so that we can actually leverage private capital uh, into infrastructure space uh, 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 in, in Africa. The second is a number of exciting investments that the African Development Bank is already making in infrastructure. If you take the case of energy, for example, we are in investing already roughly $12 billion in the energy space uh, with, a, you know, uh, 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 with the hope of leveraging anything between 45 and $50 billion uh, you know, into that particular sector. Uh, take the case of energy in, in, in Kenya. Uh, we've invested in, in Kenya in a whole range of uh, energy going from renewable energy with the Lake Tukana project, uh, which is the, the, we have a geothermal project as Menangai, a geothermal project. And these are actually exciting projects. And I'm sure, as she will tell you, um, you know, the, the last mile project, which is, is, is something to have connection, I mean, infrastructure. The other one is to connect people to infrastructure. And the last mile, last mile uh, project has connected probably about 3.3 million people in Kenya alone to electricity. So it's exciting in terms of what is being done. The opportunities to do things differently in terms of public and private investment is what you see. And I think that the kind of things that we are doing at the bank, um, you know, de-risking um, projects is very, very important. Take the case of Lake Tukana or the case of the geothermal project. There are particular risks involved for the investors uh, that we have to actually use uh, partial risk guarantees to reduce the risk of exposure uh, of the IPPs, uh, inter Integrated Power Projects, to government not meeting its obligations. And those are the kind of things that we do normally. So I think that the instruments are there. I think new vehicles, platforms of uh, delivery such as Africa 50 and the work that we are scaling up in the African Development Bank provides me the excitement that I know that we'll be able to close this uh, uh, investment gap in not too long a time.